from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube. Covering AWS reInvent 2015. Now your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in The Cube at AWS reInvent for wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Amazon Web Services. The cloud game is changing, it's exploding, they're more enterprise focused. This is theCUBE, our flagship program from SiliconANGLE. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, and my guest this segment is CUBE alum, famous venture capitalist, Jerry Chen, one of the other partners not featured in the New Yorker, uh, <laughs> Reed Hoffman, I saw the article, your partner, you're one of the other guys. I'm one of the other uh, guys. That's inside joke, but um, great success. Thanks. Uh, investor in Docker, a lot of other deals you got going on. Um, great to have you back, great, great to see you. Thanks, John. Uh, thanks for having me, it's always great to be back at theCUBE. It wouldn't feel like reInvent if I wasn't um, spending some time with you guys, yeah, so thank we, you. Yeah, we really appreciate you. Uh, spend the time. A lot of deals here, you guys are scouring the landscape. What's going on? I see a lot of VCs here. Again, every year, yeah. more VCs showed up. You were early on, before you even pulled the trigger on Docker. Yeah. You were looking at cloud, obviously your, your, his, your, your pedigree at VMware, you know the cloud business. What, where are we, man? Are you like, are you surprised? Are you blown away? Are you like pinching yourself like, man, Amazon's tearing it up? The other guys are in the dust? What's the landscape look like? It, it's a great question. So I would say, um, first and foremost, what does it feel like? It feels like there's still early innings of the, of the cloud, but a lot of the early opportunity around cloud services, cloud security, around a bunch of mobile services, that's all been played out, I think. And we're looking at uh, vertical application and vertical solutions meet vertical clouds. So I think we're, we're looking at what cloud enables, right? My whole wave versus wavelets theme. So yeah. if the wave is a cloud, what wavelets will, will occur following Amazon. But Amazon, as a company, and the cloud business yeah. in particular, it's amazing, right? 7.3 billion, $8 billion run rate. If this was an independent company, it'd probably be 80 to $120 billion market cap, potentially, at least. It was public traded. So you have that feeling of this um, inevitable march of you know, Amazon building more services, releasing more features, more technology. So they have a storage device. Pure Storage, one of your portfolio yep. companies, not yours, but Greylock, invested yep. in Scott Deason, great entrepreneur. When IPO, public when today. When IPO today, great news on that front, good liquidity, but still, that's storage. Yeah. I mean, Pure's not going to put EMC out of business, but Amazon could put EMC out of business. Their storage business has got to be at least, you know, two billion dollars. It's probably the largest storage company started the past 10 years, right? If you think about that, like- a AWS. AWS, yeah. right, S3, EBS, now Alaska Files. It's probably the largest storage company started the past few years. It's the largest server company started the past <laughs> five to 10 years. Large right? app developer company started the last five years. Or, or database, fastest growing search, we've heard that on, in the keynote today. Right, right. Outpacing Redshift, which is tearing it up. Right, absolutely. What does this all mean? Well, then the question becomes, is cloud a winner take all, a winner take most business? Right, and, and that, that I think, if you think about Amazon, and, and it's not just one company or one product, it's, it's hundreds or dozens of really relevant products. So, so the way I think as a VC is, is cloud a winner take all, winner take most business, like operating systems, which Microsoft won in the 90s? Then if you think of data, you think of analytics, you think about storage, you think about security, you think about networking, you think about mobile services. Are each of those winner take most, winner take all um, markets? If it is, then something like an Amazon that gets a lot of traction, a lot of momentum, then it's going to be hard to compete. But if it isn't, and there's certain areas like databases, I don't, you know, or databases service may or may not be winner take most, then I think there's plenty of opportunities for startups and, and incumbents to compete. Yeah, and get those white spaces. This beachhead, basically, will the will there be beachhead for new opportunities right. to grow and figure out where to go? Or or seams in between these opportunities, right? It's yeah. oftentimes as a startup, 10, 20, 30 million in revenue is a big deal. And that's yeah. you, you start early and you, you grow. Amazon's now the size where if you're not generating maybe 50, 100 million dollars in revenue in your service, you know, why bother? Yeah. It's so big now, it's, it's the classic innovator's dilemma. And it's fascinating to watch that in, in the short time of the past six, seven, eight years, it's gone from scrappy startup to large incumbent, and then all the, all the potential weaknesses of being a large incumbent in terms of innovator's dilemma, you know, not innovating fast enough, um, leaving white space for startups, that's going to be the next theme about Amazon, I think. You know, one of the things I like about your firm at Greylock, not to sound like I'm kissing up to you, but the firm has got a lot of ex-entrepreneurs, um, and also have good professional investors. Tier one VC, great investments, Cloudera, 
Pure went public today. Um, uh, your partner, Reid Hoffman, was featured in The yeah. New Yorker. John Lilly was the CEO of Mozilla. Those guys are doing some pretty cool things at Stanford, this blitz scaling class that they're teaching, yeah. which I commented on, on Facebook by saying, I think that's a huge deal, yeah. it's open source, they're documenting it, they're really giving back and trying to shape this next generation kind of entrepreneur on execution. So you have a good execution um, staff yeah. mindset, entrepreneurial, so I got to ask you the question, this is not necessarily a dig against Reed and John Lilly, because I love the, love the class, I'm following it closely, it's great for consumer companies, yeah. but what is the blitz scaling model for enterprise? Sure. So that it's different, you can't say blitz scaling that they're teaching at Stanford actually doesn't apply, I would argue, doesn't apply to the enterprise fully. Sure. There might be some pieces here and there, go to market, frictionless, blah, 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 but what is blitz scaling? It's a little bit harder game, different, different roadmap. What's yeah, your take on I'd that? I'd say, um, uh, so I, I think, so Blitz, so what Reed and John are, are teaching a class, uh, Stanford's online, is free for everyone to, to watch and consume. Um, it's, the whole thesis, you know, starting up is easy. Everyone can start a company, you know, you credit card on Amazon, scaling's the hard part. Right? I would agree with right? that, and, and as an entrepreneur yourself, yeah. successful entrepreneur yourself, you know scaling's the hard part. It's hard, hard part. as hell. And so, what, what does scaling mean? Scaling changes from zero to 10 employees 10 to 100, 100 to 10,000, every part of that curve, the, the problems change. And that's both from HR, um, sales processes, R&D processes, uh, uh, marketing, et cetera. And so some of the things they're teaching are very, very um, consumer oriented. Some are very um, common, like how do you recruit world-class talent at speed? But some areas like um, go to market, sales, distribution, channels, pricing, those areas are very different when it comes to enterprise. And I always say the battle between um, startups and incumbents is distribution versus technology. And the, the hard part for a startup is getting that distribution. So you look at a pure storage, you know, going to war against EMC is how can they grow with better technology and, and get the products in the hands of customers faster before EMC can buy and try to catch up. Be and faster, so, basically. And, how, and that's, that's the blitz scaling for the enterprise is, A, how do you grow the product? How do you add more features, more technologies, more product lines? And then it's clearly how do you recruit great talent, but how do you, how do you get distribution and get a market? And at, at Greylock, we think a lot about, as entrepreneurs, not only how the technology is fundamentally better, is there, is there deep IP, or is there operational IP, but also how to get this in the hands of your, your customers. And if you're a, a mobile app or a consumer app, okay. there's social networks to, to tap into. But if you're an enterprise product, we think about, okay, how is the go-to-market yeah. for this product going to happen? So I got to get, uh, I got to take it to the next level then, which is I'm a buyer at an enterprise. Yeah. The consumption of product and technology is also changing. So yep. you have now kind of a blitz scaling vibe going on there. We say, okay, what Amazon's basically showing is you can actually have a tenth of the cost in these areas for developer yep. with some distribution in marketplace. IBM's promoting the same thing with Bluemix. Oracle has their thing on say marketplace, but you're seeing that kind of vibe. So what does that mean for the buyer? Yeah. How are they consuming the products and services with a cloud, public cloud, and sure. hybrid in play? It's, um, it's, it's changed. Before the CIO or the VP of technology was the only buyer, and the CFO wrote the check, right? So all buying was centralized, and you kind of had this procurement office. And, and now with cloud and SaaS and um, distribution channels, that last mile has changed. So you have app stores, um, so I can get things on my phone uh, or my iPad. You have um, cloud, so developers can go just hit uh, Amazon or Google or Azure and start developing. And they have SaaS consumption, where basically from a website or from app store, I can get HR apps, I get finance apps. And so what's happening now is that buying has um, been decentralized. So the good news as a, as a startup exec, you now have multiple buyers to choose from. So it's not only do I have to like knock on the door of the CIO of a large investment bank or the CIO of a large retail company, there's only one gatekeeper. Now as a startup, I can actually sell to the developer, to the VP of sales, the CFO, to the business analyst, right? To, to the, the, the sales rep in the field because there's multiple channels to my end user. And so the beauty is, as a startup, is great. There, there's no better time to try to build something because you don't have to deal with this kind of a like gatekeeper to get to your ultimate user if you're selling CRM software. So they're going to add you to the blitz scaling roster for a blitz scaling enterprise? Uh, <laughs> you know, I, 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 you know, Reed and I and John have talked about, uh, you know, content going forward. Maybe the next class would do an yeah. enterprise version of that. And 
Um, they well, seem pretty happy with that. Chris Yeh's and also yeah. involved Stanford, all these Stanford alum guys. So yeah. uh, they pretty seem happy about that. So, so okay. Bottom line, what's going on here? What's your takeaway? Um, yeah. What are you looking at? Have you bumped into anything? Are you doing any deals? What's going on at Amazon? What's on the floor in your mind? Sure. What's on your observation space right now? You, you know, the thing of what I, I come to these events for um, two or three reasons. One, to talk on the cube. <laughs> two, <laughs> to catch up with um, uh, alums of, of Amazon, Microsoft, VMware, all these other tech companies out there. So just reconnecting with individuals because you know we, we are in a internet, Twitter, um, crowd chat world but we're definitely also living in a world where you know, face-to-face -face communication matters. And the third thing is, the, is studying the rate of change, right? Is, is companies that three years ago, four years ago, the first Amazon weren't here, or were here in a small way, and how big are they now? In terms of booth size, traffic, yeah. products, and uh, it's such a great way to absorb so many data points uh, and understand the rate of change, are things growing and they're slow and they're going declining. And like I always say, um, when it comes to investing, or even decision making, I collect the dots before we connect the dots. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I come here to Amazon, to all the shows that yeah. you and I meet at, to collect the dots, right? And then I collect the dots and then I connect the dots and the for investment thesis of where things are going. Yeah, and that's also you know, key, you, you're in the middle of it, so you've been riding this Whitewater Rapids ah. for almost eight years now, yeah. maybe 10, right? I mean, 10 years, you go 10 back and you look at that and say, okay, what's the biggest change that's happened in your mind? Like, like if you can yeah. look back and say, okay, between 10, in the past 10 years, from Jerry Chen doing cloud, early days, to now, what is the biggest thing that's changed and the, the biggest thing that's also surprised you? Sure, um, I, I think the biggest wave clearly is uh, mobile, cloud mobile. So people say, is mobile something different trend or is one trend, but the past 10 years of, of my career working in cloud infrastructure is what mobile as a sensor, as a device, as an input has changed. And we talk about this change from moving systems of record, systems of engagement, systems of intelligence, right? And one of our companies, Trifacta, talks a lot about this. It used to be systems of record, who owned the data? Who owned the database? Then it became systems of engagement, how you interact with your user, be a web browser, there's the browser wars, yeah. right, to the app wars of, of who owns an app on your phone. So that's, that's a systems of, of, of interaction battle. And now, we're kind of seeing the systems of intelligence. How can you make better decisions? How can you yeah. make faster decisions? Machine learning, Correct. machines. Absolutely, so I think that, um, because the mobile definitely applied, plays in the whole system record, collecting more data, better data. It definitely plays in the whole systems of interaction, right? How you engage with your users, and that's been probably super transformative. And who knows what comes next in terms of systems of intelligence, machine learning, um, early days there, and, and have a whole thesis of what's going on in kind of machine learning and data, but more on how it shapes applications. So A, that, that has been kind of the, one of the most dramatic changes because um, all the things that follow that trend percolates um, permeates through this room, and the way you build applications for this world of mobile apps, um, smart data apps, very different. I mean, 10 years ago, it was still mostly Windows Server, Windows, um, Microsoft SQL Server as a database, Windows Server 2000, Windows Server like 95, that was the canonical stack, right? And yeah, people, yeah. people spent a lot of time talking about that. Now, do people really talk about operating systems? not in the data center, they talk about iOS versus Android, when you say the OS They talk Linux, open source is what they talk about. But did, it, did he talk about Red Hat versus something else? No, it's, this is, it's going to be Linux, Generic, right? Yeah. It'll be Linux, and so uh, the OS battles have moved from like Linux versus Windows to like Android versus iOS, and so the way you build your application to enable these new apps has changed. So macro trend, to answer your, 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 your final question was, this wave towards mobile and what it means in terms of building applications, the biggest trend in the past 10 years. And that springs the Internet of Things. Internet of Things. Is it's mobile. Is mobile, it's right? It's the edge of the well, network. Well, the Internet had things long for, for a yeah. long time. I mean, it's called the edge of the network, the is connected it, device. This last, this last mile. Yeah. Because that wave has drafted and pulled so many changes in operating systems, uh, virtualization versus containers, databases from relational databases to big data to Hadoop to key value stores. Um, you know, that, that has kind of like percolated and permeated and passed through every stack, every level of the infrastructure stack. 
Jerry Chen, great to have you. You're like a guest analyst. We're going to have you on. Like, yeah. <laughs> also VC doing great stuff. Congratulations. Right. Obviously, we didn't even mention Docker much, but not, not a lot of, too much to talk about here. Uh, but a uh, quick update on Docker. They're making money, you don't care. They're doing great. Uh -huh. What's going on? Uh, 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 definitely care about them making money, <laughs> and they're definitely doing great. So uh, everyone here should drop by the booth and, and learn about the enterprise products. That Good they're, recruiting they're opportunity on. also. Great management team yeah. at Docker, big fan. Uh, Jerry Chen, obviously enlightening us with this great insight. Thanks for sharing your knowledge and data with us here on theCUBE, where we're collecting the dots, and, and hopefully you can connect them. Uh, we can do that every time we go to an event. Thanks for watching. This is theCUBE here, live wall-to-wall -wall coverage, day two of three days of coverage. I'm John Furrier, you're watching theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break.